so session 9 create and manage databases agenda of the session is databases basic information about databases create database attach detach database create database snapshot this is amazing feature of sql server right from beginning the concept of attaching and detaching you know what uh, this attach and detach i would like to explain first and then we'll proceed creating database we have already done but attach and detach is excellent feature when you detach you are left with the two independent files you can simply copy these files on a desk pen drive anywhere and you move it take them anywhere wherever you want and then attach them now while attaching you can attach them with a new name also means you can create a new database or this feature also give you indirectly a way to create copies of the database because you are simply creating copy of the file when you detach one database it is actually take it offline and leave the files independently standalone files because there are two files if we have one mdf and one ldf file that is the database and the data and log so when you detach it these two files when you attach it again you can rename the database you can give new name you can keep the copy you can uh, locate and elsewhere this is a unique feature this is not there in mysql something similar it is different there is no attach detach concept though you can shut down the server uh, you can shut down the server you can move the copy or you can uh, lock the tables or databases uh, i mean the, you can uh, put locks on the system and then you can uh, probably move the databases but attach detach is unique database is a in a sql server is made up of collection of tables that stores a specific set of structured data unstructured data we discussed and that is file stream table contains a collection of rows also referred to as records or tuples and columns that is attributes each column is in a table is designed to store certain type of information like the data types now specific to microsoft sql server in a computer you can have one or more instances to organize your databases you can have multiple instances each instance can have more than one one or more databases within a database you can have a logical grouping of objects with ownership called schemas in each schema you can have database object like tables views and stored procedures some objects such as certificates and certificate keys asymmetric keys are contained within the database but are not contained within a schema sql server databases are stored in the file system in files this is the create database command create database database name containment on or off or partial sorry none or partial uh, this is a unique feature i will discuss this content concept of containment then on the disk name on primary file specification or files file group and log located at this location then collision then with options additional options you can specify the file group multiple file group can be specified the syntax continues like non-transactional access off or read only or full and directory name similarly we have logical file name file name operating system file and file specification the size can be specified in kb mb tb max size and file growth actually think of that uh, graphical interface the pop-up window where we specified where we created the database and all these features were available and the same script could have been generated from that when you are creating a database from a detached database then you can use the statement attach like create database database name on this location for attach so this is attach database option 
and attach database options when you are attaching from an existing detached database you can also create a snapshot create database database snapshot name on this device logical name and the physical file as snapshot of the new uh, the database of which you are trying to create the snapshot database name self explanatory on refer to the disk file primary specify the file associated with the uh, primary file name log location of the log files not applicable for database snapshot because database snapshot do not have log then for attach to create database by attaching an existing set of operating system files for attach require all data files that is mdf and ndf must be available a multiple log files exist they must all be available if you want to create from attaching you can see the database information you can use catalog views system functions and stored procedures to return information about databases files and file groups we'll go in detail we'll take a deep dive in monitoring getting information database consistency checker dbcc commands on managing these databases and viewing the database uh, that is metadata it require create database command uh, permission create any database permission or alter any database permission to provide permission you can use this grant create database to username or login name how can we move a database moving user databases you can move the data log or full text catalog files of a user database to a new location by specifying the new file location in the file name clause of alter database statement this method appears applies to moving data files within the same instance of sql server there are two ways two regions why would you do that one is planned relocation for that for each file to be moved run this command alter database database name modify file the logical name and the file name new physical file name run the following statement to bring the database offline if you need alter database database name set offline this action require exclusive access to the database if another connection is open to the database then you need to close the connection to override the behavior you can use with clause to terminate alter database database name set offline with rollback immediate tomorrow we'll be doing these comprehensive examples on relocation or copy or export import creating copies of the database today i'm going to demonstrate that immediately after the session from sql server management studio directly and generating the file then planned relocation uh, procedure continued to move the file to the new location then run this command alter database database name set online verify that uh, file change by running this query select name physical name as current location state description from sys dos master files where database id is the database name database id can be also be given and database name can also be given architecturally i still correlate these thing with the adaptive server enterprise we have every database have a database id and this behavior of bringing the online this uh, play a vital role in recovery you can decide which database to be recovered first and that comes the troubleshooting part advanced topic troubleshooting uh, the recovery or system startup behaviors where we specify we change the behavior which is stored in a specific file we can change the order in which order they need to be brought online then we can also have a relocation of uh, for scheduled disk maintenance alter database database name modify file logical file new file name stop the instance or shut down the system to perform the maintenance then move the file back uh, you know to the new location restart the instance of the sql server or the server verify the changes by executing the same command failure recovery procedure stop the instance of sql server if it is started start the instance in master only recovery mode 
by entering one of the following command at the command prompt. This is command prompt. Net stat, that is net start ms sql slash f and the t3608. For a command, for a named instance, you can specify the instance name, ms sql instance name slash f and t3608. This is a flag actually we specify. For each file to be moved, use SQL CMD command or SQL Server Management Studio to run this command. Alter database, database name, modify file, same thing. Exit the SQL CMD utility or the Management Studio. Stop the instance, move the file and then start the instance. Net start, Microsoft SQL Server. This is the recovery process and verify the change, same command. The tempdb database. This is important point. Tempdb. The tempdb database is a system database and it is a global resource that holds temporary user objects that are explicitly created, including global or local temporary tables and indexes. Temporary stored procedures table variables and cursors this is user created explicitly created they can be internal objects that the database engine creates for example work tables to store intermediate results for cursors sorts and temporary large object it can also have work files or hash join or hash aggregate operations can also have intermediate sort results for operations such as creating or rebuilding indexes or certain group by order by or union queries it can also store version stores which are nothing but collection of data pages that hold the data rows that support feature for row versioning the version store contains row version that are generated by the data modification transactions in a database that use read committed isolation level I will talk about this uh, isolation level in detail through row versioning isolation or snapshot isolation transactions row versions that are generated by data modification transactions for features such as online index operations or multiple active result sets and after triggers so physical properties of this temp DB file primary data Logical name temp dav, physical name temp db dot mdf, initial size 8 mb, and file growth automatically grow by 64 mb until the disk is full. Secondary database file you create with the temp hash, and the physical name will be temp db my ms sql hash that should end with hash dot ndf 8 mb, and file grow by 64 mb until disk is full. Log temp log temp log dot ldf 8 mb automatically grow by 64 megabytes to maximum of 2 terabytes that's the physical properties of temp db there are some restrictions on temp db you cannot add file groups backing of or restoring of database is not possible you cannot change the collation default is server collation Changing the database ownership, it is you cannot change the ownership of the database. TempDB is owned by SA. You cannot create snapshot on TempDB. Dropping the database and, uh, and the guest user from database is not possible. Principles, uh, the participating in database mirroring, this database cannot be a part of mirroring. Removing the primary file group, primary data file or log files, it's not possible. Renaming the database or primary file group is not possible. Running DBCC check allocation or check catalog is not allowed on this. And setting the database to offline is not allowed. Setting the database or primary file group to read only is also not allowed on this. These are some operational restrictions on TempDB. Any user can create temporary objects in TempDB. Users can access only their own objects unless they receive additional permissions. It is possible to revoke the connect permission to tempdb to prevent a user from using tempdb. 
optimizing the temp db the size and physical placement can affect the performance now when i'm reading when i'm referring to this point back of the mind what is going on in my mind i was uh, thinking that okay it should be on a separate disk it should be a fast disk it should be uh, like ssd device to make it more faster for example if the size that's defined for temp db is too small part of the system processing load might be taken up with auto growing 10 db to size required to support the workload every time you restart the instance of sql server you can also pre allocate space for all temp db files by setting the file size to a value large enough to accommodate the typical workload in your environment pre allocation prevents temp db from expanding too often which affects the performance because you are telling the size in advance temp db database should be set to auto grow to increase the disk space for unplanned expansions exceptions data files should be of equal size within each file group because sql server use a proportional fill algorithm that favors allocation in files with more free space dividing temp db into multiple data files of equal size provide a high degree of parallel efficiency that makes sense in operations that use temp db set the file growth increment to a reasonable size to prevent temp db database file from growing by too small a value if the file growth is too small compared to the amount of data that is being written to temp db then temp db might be constantly expand might have to constantly expand which will affect the performance check the current size and growth parameters of temp db uh, select name as file name size file size in mb case max size within this algorithm auto growth is off so let's execute this and verify in our uh, you know system i will show you yes so this is my temp db file name what all files are created the size auto growth growth value so you see so many files are created though initially when i if you look at the temp db where the system database is and temp db and i see the properties i can see the files here the files are created because it's automatically growing and this is what i was recommending that keep one file to be of a bigger size why are you creating uh, you know it is auto growing it is automatically growing as you are working so better to keep one big size file sufficient enough that you don't have to too frequent auto growth so that's what a recommended strategy is so the file growth can be specified here and uh, you can specify the initial size of the file that makes sense that's what i was trying to convey the same thing you can see from the command line same thing you can directly see from here also and uh, the, this is the stored procedure i mean this is a simple query that show you the details it's coming from temp db sys data files this is actually a nested query if you can see carefully here that's all from my side thank you so much